Welcome everybody, I'm Lori Hines. I am one of the co-hosts of Just Among Friends. We're excited to have you here with us today for this episode. We have a very, very uh, special and important guest speaker today. But before we get to today's speaker, I want to just have a few uh, announcements. I want to say uh, again, welcome to everyone that's with us on this call live and welcome to anyone who's watching the recording of this. Uh, Just Among Friends is an initiative bet uh, between myself and two friends. Uh, I'm going to show you those, uh, my friends, uh, in just a second. They are co-hosts along with me. Uh, the mission of Just Among Friends is to enlarge our circle of friends on this road less traveled where we um, come together as friends, Christians, and Jews based on our shared uh, Judeo-Christian values. Uh, we don't... Um, uh, impose our theology on each other. We're here to be friends. And so we are welcoming anybody who wants to be a part of this unique friendship. Uh, let me go ahead and do a screen share to announce um, the sponsors of Just Among Friends. Bear with me. If I can find it. Here we go. All right. Let's see. The sponsors are Ian Stacy with Texans for a Safe Israel. Mike Isley, Texans for Israel, and myself, Lori Hines, with A Taste of Israel. I also want to um, give a shout out to our upcoming speakers. Uh, today, um, we have David Bedeen, but next Sunday, we're going to have uh, Yoram Edinger. Uh, then after that, followed by um, Mr. Edinger, we're going to have Pastor David Swaggerty, and then following uh, Pastor Swaggerty, we're going to have Ryan Bellarose. So we're very excited about um, upcoming speakers, but for now, we're very excited to welcome Mr. David Bedeen live from Israel. I'm going to go ahead and put up this page. Please take a screenshot of this real quick or jot down this link. I'll leave it up here for a few seconds if you want to take a quick picture of that so that you can um, support the work he is doing. And once you hear his presentation, I promise you, you're going to want to move mountains to A, go to a pro-Israel rally, and B, you're going to want to support what he is doing. All right, so without further ado, we want to welcome Mr. David Bedeen. Welcome, David. I want to tell people who you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, David is, um, let me see one second. Before we get started, someone's trying to get in. Okay. All right. David Bedeen grew up in Philadelphia, and then he made Aliyah to Israel in 1970. He uh, established the Israel Resource News Agency in Jerusalem in 1987, and he has reported for news outlets such as CNN Radio, NBC TV, LA Times, the Philadelphia Bulletin, and the Jerusalem Post. Uh, he has acted as the Middle East correspondent for the Philadelphia Bulletin, uh, written over a thousand articles um, in the early 2000s. He has covered breaking Middle East negotiations in Oslo, Ottawa, Shepherdstown, the Y Plantation, Annapolis, Geneva, uh, Nicosia, Washington, DC, London, Bonn, and Vienna. He, uh, since 2005, he serves as the director of the Center for Near East Policy Research. Uh, and his focus, uh, or the focus of the center's investigations is the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestinian Ref Refugees, also known as UNRWA or UNRWA. Uh, it's in that context that Bedeen authored Roadblock to Peace, how the UN per per perpetuates the Arab-Israeli conflict, UNRWA policies reconsidered. Um, he's been very instrumental in uh, reaching, a, this is key, he's been very instrumental in ele uh, reaching elected officials, decision makers, and journalists. And this is important because so many of us feel hopeless of what can we do? He's gonna teach us what we can do based on what uh, his experience. So um, he's um, uh, he has uh, produced short movies, documentaries and films reporting on the investigations he has discovered over the last 30 years. And um, so we're excited to have him. He has pioneered the UNRWA reform initiative which calls for donor nations to insist on an overhaul of UNRWA. And he and his team work tirelessly to get the truth out there and uh, let people know exactly what's going on and the truth and really 
how our tax dollars are funding this um, situation. So welcome everyone. Those of you who are just joining us, we're just now getting started. We are welcoming Mr. David Bedeen. And uh, if you're just tuning in, go ahead and grab something real quick to take notes on because you're gonna wanna jot down some information that he's gonna be giving us. Um, welcome, Mr. Bedeen. Today, Thank you, it's good to be with you. You hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you, thumbs up. Today, I really want you to, let's start with, please, would you please explain to us and our audience the situation of what's going on in Israel right now? This, what, what we're experiencing now is the continuation of the 1948 war. It's hard to understand. It's not a conflict, it's a continuing war. The Palestine Liberation Organization, founded by the League of Arab States, continues. And they continue in different, in different ways. They work with Hamas, which is more Islamicized, and they work with the Palestinian Authority, which is more of a, an established entity to promote the PLO interests. Now, what's this business of PLO interests? We're talking about the first school system in history to promote the concept of murdering Jews. And people say, what about the Nazis? What about others? No, nope. this is the first time there's been, a new, there's been an actual program, an actual school system promoting such an, such an entity, such an uh, atrocity. Now, I wanna make something very clear that this is not coming from Iran. This is not coming from uh, uh, crazy places. This is coming from right here with the support of 57 nations. The first nation, the prime nation that was supporting the, BL, the UNRWA, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency until recently, which has absorbed, has absorbed the Palestinian Authority's school system. In other words, based on the Palestine Liberation Army, the Palestine Liberation Organization, UNRWA has absorbed that curriculum. Very important. Now we put the curriculum on our website. There's two websites. For all of our material, israelbehindthenews.com, and for specifically about UNRWA, unrwa-monitor.com. You can take a look at it. Take a, don't believe me because of my good looks. It's right there. We have the translations. We have a PowerPoint. Everything for you to see, very clearly put, stated. Okay. And understand, this is not a conflict. This is a war. Okay. But it's, 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 it's marketed as if it's some kind of a conflict between peoples. It isn't. Okay, I'm so glad you said it because in one of our previous conversations, I said, today we want you to explain the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And you said that it, there is no conflict. Those, that's the wrong words. The truth of the matter is it's a war. And I felt like that was so good to be corrected because we, what, we're just, this is what we hear. And so we need to know exactly what's going on. And for our readers who may not fully understand um, I think this is the, a good starting point to, to know the truth about what's going on. Um, all right, so you are going to tell us what you just said. I want to make sure I understand. Are you saying that the, there's curriculum in schools in the Palestinian community villages that teach children how to kill Jews? That's right. Uh, but in a moment, I'm going to flash on the screen a, a something which is in our reports. I'll just bring it over to this desk here after we show our first film. I'm gonna show you the picture of a woman who committed, who, who got on a bus and murdered 38 people. And she is presented as a role model, a role model for the children. This has never been. I've been through with, with the help of uh, Robert, Robert Wistrich, the late Robert Wistrich, the, the expert on Nazi anti-Semitism. I went through the school books of the Nazis. Nothing like that there. This is the step beyond. It's hard to believe. It now, it's hard to believe also, this isn't being supported by Martians or this is supported by all the Western nations. And recently, only through, only uh, two years ago, President Trump tr cut off UNRWA when we were able to get these school books to him and also put, explode the myth because UNRWA uh, hired a PR agency to try to say that they had a peace education system, which they don't have. And it was our word against everybody's word and we won. Why? Because sometimes the truth comes out. Yeah. And the, the Senator Rish, Senator uh, Senator James Rish, who was the uh, was the chair was the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He 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 author, author he authorized the GAO, the Government Accounting Office of the Congress, to put out a to, to a study. Who's right, David Bedeen and his agency, or everyone else who says they have a peace system, peace peace education system, and they decided we were correct because wow. we had the facts on our side. That's and right. sometimes the truth wins out. That's right. And that's very, very important. I want to be optimistic with everybody. Now, what's very important to understand 
that this curriculum was systematically created by the Palestine Liberation Organization. Now, people talk about PA, Hamas, and so it's, we forget what they're all about. The Palestine Liberation Organization, their purpose is to liberate all of Palestine, and that hasn't changed one iota. So see, if people say, what about the Oslo process? Well, one of the things we, we, we documented and we weren't listened to back in 1993 is that the PLO, which signed the deal on the White House lawn on September 13th, 1993, never ratified the accord. So they have no obligation to the accord. So they do what they, what they want. But the panacea of the peace process was supposed to be the school books. The school books, because as we know, but when we discovered in 1967, the school books were very, very clearly uh, war, war manuals. And that really caused a shock in Israel. I've been here since 1970. And that was the first shock that really that I really felt in my bones when I came here to Israel. Now, to the panacea of the peace process was there would be a curriculum for peace. The opposite has happened. But because of the, of the way they work with public relations agencies, I don't blame the media. I blame the way in which they work with PR agencies and do a very good job. Our job now, as, as my grandma used to say, to put the toothpaste back in the tube somehow. That's what we have to do. Now, let me, what I, what I want to do is gently begin, and before I give, I'm going to, uh, just to prepare you, I'm going to prepare you with the, with the action items of what needs to, what need to be done, and also with lists of um, the staffers of Congress who need to be contacted. Why? Because I want to give you something hopeful. The President of the United States has, has unleashed a trial balloon that perhaps he will renew funding to UNRWA, United Nations Relief and Works Agency, and to the PLO, Palestine Liberation Organization through the PA. But he hasn't done it yet. What he's waiting for is feedback from Congress. The other side is overwhelming Congress with, uh, well, these are nice people. They're, 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 they're the uh, little guys against the big guys and all that, and they're winning. We have to make sure that they don't win. So let me first give you a short film about the Palestinian classroom. We, we, have, we send in crews. It's in Hebrew with, with, English, with English subtitles, and it speaks for itself. And uh, prepare to be a little bit shocked but that you can do something because Congress right now holds the key. So, Lori, let's run our first film about the uh, Palestinian schools, okay? Thank you. In Unra. אונר"א מארחת מאז 1948 את הפליטים הפלסטינים, מקדישה 54% מתקציבה השנתי לחינוך. חינוך שכל כולו שטיפת מוח, ונטיית תקוות שווא בקרב תלמידים תמימים לזכות השיבה, לכפרים אותם נטשו ב-1948. ערב פתיחת שנת הלימודים במוסדות אונר"א, הודיע נציב אונר"א החדש, פיליפ לזריני, על שינוי מדיניות החינוך. ועל הפסקה מוחלטת של ההסתה. אין ההדרה של שהידים בבתי הספר של אונר"א. יש לנו אפס סובלנות להסתה או לאלימות, אמר לזריני. ביום הראשון לפתיחת שנת הלימודים במוסדות החינוך של אונר"א, ביקרנו בכמה מבתי הספר המטופחים של הארגון, מתוך סיכוי כי נמצא רוח חדשה של פיוס ושלום, כפי שהבטיח לזריני. השיעור הראשון בכיתה ג' בה ביקרנו הוקדש לזכות השיבה וללימוד השיר הקורא להשמדת הציונים. השיר לקוח מספר לימוד שפתנו היפה הנלמד בכיתה ג' בכל בתי הספר של אונר"א. השיר הפך להמנון וללהיט בקרב הדור הצעיר. <עוד> وأبيد فلول الغرباء وأزيل الغاصب من بلدي أمورا فتحا إتا شعور بإكروت إما الكروت إما بإمسوط الشيلة أبا ما هو أكفر مكوري شلخة بزمان شاة المدين ينكو إتسوط الشيغة مأونرا צעירים בסמוך לבתי הספר שיגרו בלוני נפץ לעבר ישראל במטרה לזרוע הרס. 
גם הם שמחו לשתף ולשוחח איתנו. נקום אל אן בהטלאק בואביל מן אלבלאלין אלחארק ומתפדירה בתג'אה אלקיין הסוהיוני, בתג'אה גילפנה אלמוחתל, חתה נרקע על קיין הסוהיוני, היא עבר על בלאלין חארקה ובלאלין מתפדירה, היא אדוות סלמיה במתיאז, לזגת על הקיין סוכן גילפנה אלקטע, נתניהו יהדד, הדה כולו ש... הוא אל אן יקום בהטלאק אלנאב בתג'אה אלבלאלין אלחארקה, לאו לא אינו מדרר מן הדה בלאלין אמיטלאק על הדה אלנאב. ونحن مستمرون في حركة بيكاشوا من تلميدي أونرا لشموع دعتهم على سخوط الشباء على شلوم وعلى ترور بالوني التفيرة بلنت الحركة مبارد ومفيدة لنا ضمرت كتير لليهود منيحة يعني كيف أقول لك الاقتصاد عند الاحتلال يعني بنيه אונר"א מקבלת 1.2 מיליארד דולר מ-67 מדינות. במקום לחנך את הדור הצעיר לשלום, היא מטפחת כבר 70 שנה את זכות השיבה, שפירושו גדוד הטרור. לבחלם פי נארג'ה על הבלדי, ולזם נגד על הכל לאחתלל וליהוד. ועד אל-מג'דה היא ארדנה, שרעו מנה אל-יהוד, שרעו מנה טובה. في حد يحلم الشجع على بلده في المقاومة يعني إنه قاوم للاحتلال واللي نهب أرضنا منه إني أحلم أرجع إلها إني أقدم نفسي إلها بمكم لأخينة الذين لشلوم على بيروة خاوم ونرى مخينة وطام للملخمة الله الله بقول إنه إنه راح يجي يوم إنه كلنا ننتصر على الاحتلال ونسترجع أرضنا يهود أخذوا منا أرضنا بقوة ولازم إحنا نستردها بقوة يعني مفاش نخدها بسلام وهيك كلام يعني نروح نواجه الصهيون العداء نخليهم يشاربوا على وطننا بالمارة لا والله ما في سلام نواجه الصهيونية إنه نتحدى الأعداء قوة وبعزيم ما نيأسش نحرر وطننا نتحدى الأعداء أخذوا أرضنا ونكتلهم كل لا يكون السلام ولا ولا إشي المدينات الترمات وبرشان جرمانيا المبيلة خيابات لدرش مأوم دبوخ على نعسة بمارخة تخينوخ شل أونرا أخيرت بفيلوتا أونرا غوررت للملخمة لا والله ما في سلام نيح يا ربي حرقهم اليهود We're back. All right, now take a look at this, please. What do you see here? You see a good looking woman near the beach. This is a fourth grade manual right, from, from the fourth grade school book from the UNRWA schools produced by the Palestine Liberation Organization for all the UNRWA schools. And this woman murdered 38 people on March, March 11th, 1978. And what's on the, 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 the coastal road attack. Before she attacked the bus, she, she murdered a photographer who happened to have been uh, Senator Ribikoff's niece. So there, she, and she was with a group of, of, of killers, of attackers. And this book, which is required reading in the fourth grade, children learn and have to do lessons on how to copy her actions, how to emulate her as a person. Now, this is a school book which 67 nations approve, approve. And the United States government, when we showed this, we got this to directly the attention of President Trump, that's one of the factors that caused him to stop the funding. Now people have forgotten. Well, I'm here to, I like to use the word, let my people know, okay? Because people don't know. And when the UNRWA hired their PR firm, an American PR firm, a very effective one, to try to say, oh, we're the suffering, we're the suffering children. We have the, we have 59 refugee camps, five million people in the refugee camps in the, uh, which which are spread throughout the Middle East. Uh, uh, 19 of them in Judea, Samaria, and Gaza. Well, we're we're the ones who are suffering, and that's that's the message that gets across. 
Now, what's very important to understand, and I view this as an opportunity. I did, when I spoke with Lori about coming on this program, I kind of knew this was going to happen now because they said they were going to have the rebellion beginning on Jerusalem Day, which was just a couple of weeks ago. So I knew then that this would be the, the opportune time. Now, you have, I grew up in America. My grandfather, I'm very, pro, was very proud of him. He was the head of the American Legion in New York. And the American system can work if you push the right buttons. Now, in the United States, you have something called the Foreign Relations Committee, and under that, the Middle East Subcommittee of the Foreign Relations Committee. Uh, and I, what, what we can do, I can ask all of you to do, is to look at this policy initially, because if you say to them, cut one run, it's not going to work. It's like taking candy away from a baby. But if you say there are conditions on which you, can, you should um, use your leverage, that will work. Laurie, if you would put up the, the, on the screen, please, the uh, Apollo's policy initiative. And make it as large as you can. Thank you. One second. Here we go. Okay. Can you make it any larger? Maybe. Let it be larger. I think this is as large as I can make it. Okay. So you see, let me read it out very carefully for you, okay? You can cancel the UNRWA war curriculum. No, and you can add that. Isn't that a reasonable thing? You yeah. can disarm the UNRWA, UNRWA schools. Where do you think, well, they were, well since 82% of the Arabs in Gaza live in UNRWA, UNRWA facilities, 11 UNRWA refugee camps. Where, where, where do you think they were getting their, their logistical support? UNRWA announced early in the campaign two weeks ago that anyone who wants to take refuge in the schools can, can do so. And that's where the IDF was not bombing. Number three, insist that UNRWA dismiss employees affiliated with Hamas. How many people remember? It's on my website. On my website, the fact that they have elections every three years for the UNRWA unions, and Hamas always wins. Well, if that's the case, if for the teachers union and the workers union, they're the people who are determining what the kids are gonna be learning, right? Now, number four, introduce UNHCR standards to advance resettlement of the fourth and fifth generation of UNRWA of the 1948 refugees. Since we can't get the United Nations, which is known for its hostility to Israel, to do any change in UNRWA, in other words, to replace it with UNHCR. UNHCR stands for the United Nations High, Refu High Commission for Refugees, which, which of course their policy, as opposed to UNRWA policy, is to resettle people. So let's just do it. Let's ask them to do it, as a otherwise you don't get your money. And last but not, but not least, demand an audit of donor funds that emanate from all nations. How much of this funds come in, come in cash? No one knows. We know that the majority of funds come in cash. And UNRWA, as a result, funds a lot of terror groups and all kinds of areas of organized crime, such as marketing of women, medical equipment, uh, you know, on the, on the black market, guns and cars. Now, the, the, there's a lot of laissez-faire here. Let's just let them alone. They, they'll be okay. It's not okay. And that's where these are the issues that you need to bring to the attention of staffers of Congress. Because when a staffer of Congress, be he a, Demo be a Democrat or a Republican, doesn't matter, when they see the basic issues here, which have been neglected for all these years, it opens them up. And I want to, I, 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 there's a certain congressman from uh, Texas, um, Congressman Green, Al Green from Texas. He's not a... Uh, left wing, a right wing guy and all, but when we showed him this material, he fell out of his seat. We've had two meetings with him. But if 50 people from Texas, 50, were to contact him personally on this on these issues, he will understand that it's not the, not the obsession of David Bedeen, but it's a real issue for people to deal with. Now, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna address how, how change is made in the United States and, and basically every, every country. One of my friends, one of my colleagues has just retired from Congress. He was a staffer 
in a major in a major area of Congress. I asked him, how does Congress operate? He said, if I if we get letters from 10 people, 10 reasonable letters, we go into a tizzy, we act. Now there's more than 10 people on this on this uh, Zoom right now. If every single one of you were to contact each member of, of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, and since you're Texans, I, I'd ask, I didn't get it, but I need the, all the all the Congress people in Texas. It's very accessible. It's not like it used to be. Everything's accessible now. Now let's look for, for, for right now, before I go on to another uh, show and tell, uh, let's look, uh, Lori, for the, on the list of staffers of Congress. And this is where you take your pencils out and see who you have to contact. All right, can you put that, stand, that list up there, Lori? Thank you. Yes, I sure can. One second. And you give them the impression that you're, you know, you don't have to be from their district, but you might support them even financially if they come through. Go to the bo bottom of the page there and press, press the last link, please. Here it is. Actually, I think it's at the, I think it's at the top. Let me go back up. Sorry. Up a little bit, up a little bit above, above where the flag is. Right here. Which is the members? Yeah. Okay. Good. There you go. Now these, these, if you can make these these pictures, of the whole list a little bit bigger, that'll be great. These are the people who have. Remember that when I was a little kid, there was a there was a great lady singer who says, "You have the whole world in your hands. You have the whole world in your hands." Oh, I'm not a good singer. Look, these are the people who have Israel's destiny in their hands. These people, they have absolute fiduciary responsibility for every penny coming out of the United States government in the area of Middle East policy. You contact these people, it is, and you push the button on any of them, you'll see who their staffers are, you'll see who, how to contact them. And look, you can, I see here on the left side, Brad Sherman. Now, Brad Sherman is a, Cal, is a California Democrat who has influenced, who has, who has introduced binding legislation to supervise UNRWA schools. Finding legislation, that's never been before. Now, if, if Brad, Brad Sherman's getting, catching a lot of heat from people, say, hey, you have to just give them the money, they're suffering. If, if a number of people were to contact him directly, give him support, the word we use in Hebrew is chizuk, there will be a change. Very, very important. These are the people to talk to. Why do you talk to the people? It's like asking a, a bank robber, why do you rob banks? Because that's where the money is, that's where the influence is. Okay, I'm off. I think it's great that people are gathering for, for a rally in New York today. That's great. But if you the, the thousand people who will gather in New York, if a thousand people were to be in touch with these people concerning UNRWA reform, it will make a, it will make a really and you have to individually, not from an organization, individually, individually pour your heart out that this 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 kind of uh, murder curriculum should not be advanced. Now. I know that Ted Deutsch has been approached by the other side very effectively. Ted Deutsch, you'll see him on, on, the, on the left side there. He's the ranking member, he's the chairman of the, uh, of the House Middle East Subcommittee. He's got all the power in the world and he happens to be Jewish. But on the other hand, the other side is pushing him and said, for humanitarian reasons, we can't make conditions for the aid. Well, that's what we have to contract. Okay, we have to contract. Just to make, it, make the issue even more strong, I'm going to ask, okay, so we're going to bring back this list in a minute, and I want Lori to please run more, one, one more film. I, we've made 24 films that are on our site, and by the way, I'm not embarrassed to say that we produce the films with private support, only with private support, the, uh, the, uh, the only with private support that we get, okay? Okay. Uh, by the way, I just see on the side, uh, someone asked if I'm Adi, uh, Adi Badin's father, I'm her father-in-law. And she's the daughter, she's the mother of my grandsons. We're very proud of her. <laughs> anyway, love um, Andy and your son David. I, I mean, your son um, Noel. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We have two sons, four daughters, and ten grandchildren. Yes. Amazing. Okay. Uh, I put the so link. That's what we make it. We make it. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I was just going to say I put the link, everybody, in the chat box to that list of members of Congress. If you want to go ahead and copy that link while it's there and paste it in a notepad somewhere. Uh, I'll also try to make this available on YouTube uh, when I post this to YouTube. I want everybody here has, uh, look, I'm not wasting my time here. 
I want to know that everyone here is going to tell me that they're going to do something about this tomorrow morning, Monday morning. Monday morning quarterback, you know? You got to th throw that football on Monday morning because these are the people you have. Uh, the other side is approaching them very, what the other side does is sends pictures of dead Palestinian children, wounded Palestinian children, suffering Palestinian children, and they know what they're doing. And they pull their heartstrings. And so you have to have conditions, but look at these children who are suffering. They don't care about, they don't care about anything but that kind of manipulation. Right. So let me show you how, our, how uh, the Arabs, young people are being manipulated in the worst of ways. Let's just watch this film. Go ahead. This is one of our 24 films. Go ahead. Here is the young man whom UNRWA appointed to be their ambassador of goodwill only six years ago. Let's introduce Muhammad Asaf, the rising star in the Arab world, after he won the Arab Idol Popularity Contest. Muhammad grew up in Gaza, in a refugee camp run by UNRWA, United Nations Relief and Works Agency. On Friday night, August 23rd, Muhammad Asaf filmed the amphitheater in Rabi, just north of Ramallah, and whipped up the crowd with songs of violence, which UNRWA chose not to notice. away, a 17-year-old Jewish girl, Mira Schnerb, was killed by a firebomb thrown by a Palestinian Arab, which also maimed her father and her brother. Yet the UNRWA ambassador of goodwill decided to go on with the show as if nothing had happened. <laughs> What Muhammad Asim did not forget was to preach the new generation with the values that he had learned from UNRWA classroom to nurture the dream of the right of return by force of arms. <laughs> Muhammad Asaf makes his presence known on the stage, but also in the schools for which UNRWA operates. Latif Hamad greets Muhammad Asab on the podium. Her claim to fame is that she is the mother of six murderers, one of whom was killed, while the rest of whom are serving in the imprisonment 
for complicity in the act of murder of 20 people. <laughs> أهل غزة لما ينضرب صاروخ بيجوا تانيين تنضرب عليهم صاروخ بشردوا بخاف احنا ما تعودناش على الخوف احنا مع ال... مع الكرامة يا بعيش بكرامة يا بموت بكرامة الأغنية أيضا مقاومة والكلمة مقاومة والفن مقاومة فتنتروحي يا شهيد علمتها معنى الخلود شوقتها إلى الرحيل علمتها معنى الصمود Okay, that is a that is what we call not only incitement but indoctrination. Very important to understand. You have in your power to stop this kind of thing. It's up to you. The word for optimistic in Israel is optimi, and I always explain it's up to me. Every single person watching this Zoom, you can stop this insanity. And it produced what it produced last week not only from Gaza, but when they say right of return and to kill the Jews who live in our homes from 48, they talked about Lod and Ramla and Yafo, and that was a real, I don't know how much play it got in the United States, but that was the focus of some of the rioting and murders that took place last week. Someone, a Jew going through the home, his hometown of Lod was lynched because a Jew shouldn't be there. And that's what UNRWA teaches a whole new generation. Stop the murders. No UNRWA, no murders. That's what you got to say very clearly, members of Congress, that this is not acceptable. Write it in your own words, simple and clear. In, Hebrew, in Yiddish, you say mamalosh, a very clear language. You can't sound crazy. You can't say, I heard this. You provide the documentation. I sent, put my website up there, israelbehindthenews.com and UNRWA-monitor.com. Very, there, very, very important. It's there. What I'll ask Lori to do is one more or put on the screen how people can help our work because we're totally dependent on private support. We will not take government support or political support because that would compromise us. And we'll have to see, uh, have to see, you know, check it out and whatever. It does, it's a politically correct. Uh -uh. We're the most politically in incorrect agency in the world. Okay, let me do that real quick. Let's see. The whole oh, yeah, there we are. Okay, let me go back here. I think we lost David. Give us just one second, friends. Uh, the call dropped on his end. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and share that screen he was asking me to share. Here it is. Please take a screenshot of that, and I will also try to um, put this in the chat box all right let me go back here okay very good um we'll give him a minute if he wants to try to uh jump back on the call and in the meantime let's um see if we can get some questions. I'm gonna, gonna go away for just a second. Ann Stacy is here. Go ahead and start typing your questions in the chat box while I reach out to David and try to help him get reconnected. I'll be right back. Let's see. Yeah, this has been an unusual not that every one of them is it's just exceptional, but I'm telling you, this has been an unusual hour that we're spending with uh, with David. 
I mean, those videos, that last one just blew me away. I had not seen that one. Uh, I agree too. You know, the, th the thing that's going on here is that people don't realize is that this conflict, this this uh, opposition is thousands and thousands of years old. And so it's simply a rehash of history of what we're seeing. And okay. I, I would add too, there's no way to cancel this. I mean, these, you're either you have to take Israel's side or not. Wait, Ari, can you um, repeat that? I'm going to um, mute Ann for just a second because there's feedback on her computer. But hang on one second. All right, Ari, can you unmute and repeat what you just said? Yeah, so this, this, this uh, conflict, you know, people don't want to call it a conflict, but it's a spiritual conflict that goes back thousands of years. And there's nothing that the media can do to cancel this. You know, we have to choose Israel's side every time. And, and because... They are the ones that are fighting for justice for the region. And so if we don't understand these things, we end up uh, backing the wrong uh, people. Yes. Uh, I want to show you all something that this is the kind of stuff we're dealing with. Um, you know, we saw on the video just a second ago um, how they are influencing their, you know, they're indoctrinating their youth. Okay, so I, we're having the same problem here. <laughs> Believe it or not, our young people, I mean, our adults, middle-aged and older, barely understand what's going on. And I can assure you that our young people are just as brainwashed with the propaganda coming at them from every direction. Let me show you a sample. I, I got a message recently uh, from a friend who is my age. Um, and she um, sent me this message. She said, please help me explain this Israeli-Palestinian issue. Let me show you what she got. Let me do a quick screen share here. David is rejoining yes. us. So, hey, David, give us one second. Yes. We're glad you're back. Yes, um, give us one second. I want to show everybody this uh, something while, we, while you were reconnecting, we were talking. So about how the young people here are also brainwashed just as they are in Gaza and the Arab world. So she, this is a young person here in America. She said, uh, she was asked the question, can you please explain to me why you are supporting Palestinians over Israel? Just curious. Her response was, because innocent people are being bombed, killed and pushed out of their homeland just for practicing their religion. I'm not necessarily supporting one religious group over another, rather I'm supporting nonviolence against innocent people in the name of religion. This young American girl is ignorant. And if we could get her to listen to the truth, she, she would be shocked. If she would watch this video, she would be shocked. But you know we're up against the same kind of um, psychological warfare. Uh, people just don't know. So what David's telling us is let me give you let me give you some more information that you need to hear. These 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 school books which you're seeing, and we've been through one thousand of the books, and you'll see it described on our site, are now being recycled to the United States and other nations. Very important to know, and people don't know that they're using the diplomatic courier because to, to, they have a surplus of books. And then in the books, they're sending it, sending it out. So the UNRWA school books, you know, it's not going to Gaza, Judea, Samaria, but also every Islamic center possible. Very effectively written. Now, again, if you, if someone were to stop the spigot, stop the spigot, close the spigot, regulate the spigot, we can put an end to this. Because these young people in America, because there is a, a Muslim youth are, in, are influencing regular Muslim, regular, regular Christian and Jewish youth, that's one of the factors we're dealing with. Very, very important. Lori, I'll ask you once again, we, we're tomorrow ordering 4,500 new, new, new school books to, for, for distribution. And also we have a, a team who are going through the brand new school books coming out uh, for the next school year. Uh, this is an expensive operation, what we're doing. So please put on the, on, the, on the link for donations to our agency one more time, if I may ask you, if, I'm not, if that's not being chutzpahdik, but I think I'm not embarrassed <laughs> to say this costs money. But I'm not willing. I'm not willing to stoop down to the issue of getting a asking a government or a or a, a government a, a 
a government agency or a political organization to support us. We must maintain our independence. And people say, why do you have to go through all the school books? Is it one enough? No, because what their lie is, well, there's good school books too. We were sent a $10,000 donation to pr produce school books for peace in the Palestinian Authority. We returned the donation. If you, it, it, we'll, we'll produce what is, not what you'd like it to be. We don't work, work for Walt Disney. Very important. Very good. Thank you, David. We have some questions now. Um, and I also put oh, that. My, my, I'm going to shut off my phone. Excuse me. Okay, sure, sure. I put the link to the donations also in the chat box, uh, friends, if you want to copy that as well. Um, let's see. We have here. Expand. Okay. I'm back. Okay, so let's see. One of the questions is, we are hearing about the use of the Chinese-backed social network TikTok in Israel by the Palestinian Authority. Can you speak to that? I'm going to be, we're, we're actually working on that now. Uh, I didn't know what TikTok was, but I also didn't know what Twitter was either. Uh, but there are some young people who are putting together a special report on that issue. Keep tuned, we'll, stay tuned. We're going to produce a very important documentary on that subject. Okay, okay, so we can follow your website for that update. Thank you. Um, he, someone has also asked for, uh, it would be helpful to have a list of people on the Foreign Affairs Committee. And I know that that information is out there. All you have to do That's is- That's exactly what we just provided you. That link, yep. Uh, that, that is what we provided you. And they're the people who make the decisions. Yep, so that link is in the chat box and very but, good. And read read, read in, the, in that same site, we show how powerful they are. They make all decisions. Yep. So you don't have to fetch and you have to correct these 18 people, 18 human beings, decide American foreign, foreign policy in the Middle East. And uh, it doesn't matter that Congressman Deutsch happens to be Jewish, he's good, but the other side in the interests of peace are pushing him in a certain direction. The propaganda and, uh, is unbelievable that they push. But, and again, people don't realize that Mahmoud Abbas, who is the Abu Amazin, he's the same guy who is providing money, an award, a salary for anyone who will murder a Jew. This is unprecedented. And then this doesn't, this hasn't registered with enough people because he has an aura of peace around him. And people don't understand that ever since Ronald Reagan's recognition of the PLO it was Reagan, not Carter Reagan, it's been it's been downhill ever since. And this is this is something that American citizens can stand up to and say this is not to be accepted. I can't hear you, Lori. Okay, I was just saying uh, it didn't. We didn't see this this um, level of terroristic attacks during the Trump administration, but we certainly saw it before and now. And the, one of the reasons is he um, put out the Taylor Force Act, which stopped that funding to the Palestinian Authority. Uh, and now we're hearing that Biden wants to reinstate that funding. Well, again, now let's let me be very clear about something. It hasn't been reinstated yet. My suggestion, my suggestion to everyone who's on a Zoom call is to, is, to, is to ask your congressperson, these congresspeople, would they like to meet with, in this, in this case it's by Zoom, people whose loved ones have been murdered and the killers are being paid for the rest of their lives along with their families. Make a connection, a human connection. Ask one question of anyone who supports what's called the peace process. If they murdered your mother, and pay the, per pay the killer who murdered your mother a salary for the rest of his life, how would you feel? And that's very important, okay? Yeah. You gotta personalize it. Personalize it very, very clearly. Don't mince words. In Israel, we don't mince words. That's why some Israelis are not so popular. That's the way it is, okay? Understand, yeah. this is, if they, if they, if they mur just keep saying, if they murdered your mother and pay the killer to murder your mother for the rest of her life, the killer's life, how would you feel? Pay to slay program. Thank you, um, David. We have another question here. Does anyone know if there is a website with translated material from the Palestinian Authority's textbooks? On my website, that's exactly what we have. Okay. On IsraelBehindTheNews.com and also Unwa-Monitor.com, you will see. Okay, the the the, all the textbooks translated. First, you'll see on the top of the page, you'll see a PowerPoint with thirty nine with twenty six of the worst school books. And then as you keep going around and go, going through the site, you'll see a whole URL devoted to the school books that the that UNRWA hands, the Palestinian Authority handed over to UNRWA. Very important, okay? Right. 
And by the way, there's someone who just said a piece of information which is not correct. Someone wrote just now on the, on the chat, we understand that the Biden administration has already, uh, already handed over $231 million to the PA. They haven't done it yet. They haven't done it yet. Say that to yourself 10 times. And you can stop that money. You can stop the money for killing, for murder. It hasn't, because the American system is a beautiful system. It's called checks and balances. It's called, you know, feedback. And that's the whole point. If you, if you work on it, you may be able to get to the conscience of staffers of Congress in the same way that when we went, went to Senator J James Wish of Idaho, and you notice I wear a kippa. I don't think he had a, had a kippa, kippa wearing going, coming into his, his office ever. But I walked in there, showed him the books. He said something very simple. This is, should, should not be taught in a school. Simple. Keep it simple. And in terms of the situation right now, Biden has, the people around Biden have floated a trial balloon and no one is shooting it down. That's the problem. Yeah, that's right. This is the frustration is that we have this knowledge, but it stops there. If we take the next step, like you said, tomorrow morning and email these letters to all of these congressmen on the Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, we could make change. Um, and this Someone is what just asked on the, on the chat, what are the chances of it, of, it, of it going through? It's up to you. It's up if every hour on the hour, you are contacting in a very clear, not crazy way, the, the staffers of Congress, and you're sending a letter to all 18 people of the Middle East subcommittee, and you keep doing it and, and get all your friends to do it, all your colleagues to do it. I, I, power is not what you have, but the, what the adversary thinks you have. Yeah. If 50 people, I'm going to say the same thing to AFSI in New York. They're, they're putting people on the on, on outside, uh, and I hope you, you, you say this to them because they're, they're demonstrating in New York right now. Yeah. Those thousand people, that's great. I, I love it. But those thousand people need to send one thousand uh, communications to the Middle East subcommittee. If they don't do it, then they're missing the game. The, 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 the war for Israel in the United States is being fought in two levels, one in Congress, two in the media. Now, I asked, I mentioned this to Lori, and I mentioned this to each of you. Find whoever your op-ed editor is from your newspaper. That op editor needs good material. And if he sounds obnoxious, that's not a pro that's not our problem. When you're when you're promoting a Broadway uh, uh, Broadway special, Broadway play, don't expect the critics to be on our side. Uh, full disclosure, my grandmother used to promote Broadway, but that's what she's critics are like bad weather. Get it, get it, get an umbrella. Right. Go ahead. Right, right, right. Um, thank you, Mr. Bedeen. Okay, anybody else have any questions or thoughts? If you do, please unmute yourself and we'll turn it, uh, we will certainly give you an opportunity to make a comment or ask a question. Let's see, I don't see anybody. Go ahead and jump in. Okay, Ari, go ahead, unmute yourself. Yeah, we understand, you know, that the majority, you know, the Democrats, uh, you know, a lot of us voted for Trump. And uh, in the Democrats, their, their language is certainly more uh, pro-Palestinian than the Trump administration. And so a lot of us are, uh, it's just a very hard conflict because now we have to convince the other side that, that what they should be doing is not funding the, uh, the PA and their, and their works. And so what we wanna do is we wanna stop this. And uh, so it's, <laughs> You see, but the, it's just very hard. Very difficult. I couldn't look. If it was easy, we wouldn't be doing our work. Okay, uh, Ari, really, I, I really appreciate your candor because that's exactly the issue. We're not trying to convince anyone to stop any funding. We're trying to condition people to condition the funding. Right? There, there's no chance in the world we'll stop the funding to UNRWA. Very clear. But what about the conditions? What we're asking to do is something reasonable. Go to them with respect. You identify with the Palestinian cause. Fine. That's your, that, that, it says that's your problem. But okay, you don't have to say it that way, but you can say very clearly, very clearly, if you're supporting the Palestinian cause, and by the way, I wanna give, give an example. I'm in touch with a certain member of parliament in Sweden who doesn't particularly like Israel, but he, she likes the work we're doing. Why? Because she wants to make sure that the funds she's sending over from Sweden will get to the people we're supposed to get to. So you wanna help the Palestinians? No problem. We, we may differ, differ in terms of how to do it, but why not make some conditions? Be very reasonable, be bipartisan, be American. That is how to do it. Right. And too many people have lost that. 
I, yeah, I'd like to say something toward that because I think when you're funding a side, you're funding uh, an ideology, a theology, and you're funding basically their theology. I mean, it's, I mean, you can put all the restraints you want on it, but it ultimately, it's going to come down to a religious side you're taking. No religious person in the world, perhaps outside of the Saudis, who favor a school system promoting murder. It doesn't exist, okay? It doesn't exist. It's just that the other side doesn't emphasize that. All right? That's very important to understand. And what we're seeing now happening in Israel, these are the targeting Jews. You're going to see the, 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 the Muslim Brotherhood, the Hamas, they're seeing very clearly that they're going to be attacking Jews in the U.S. very, very shortly. As part of the, if, if, if we don't get out of Jerusalem, all kinds of ridiculous things. Mm -hmm. So understand, this is not a religious, this is not a religious demand. I don't believe, uh, I, 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 before I moved to Israel, we were fourth generation Democrats, right? We thought that was the best thing in the world. So people believe that. But understand, this is way, way beyond Democrat and Republican. Now, what they have done, there's been a systematic effort uh, to try to paint the PLO and the, their movement as something which, which is akin to the civil rights movement. They actually have visits, they have pilgrimages to the Martin Luther King Center in, in, um, in Atlanta, things like that. They try to repackage themselves as something reasonable when they're not. So when you, when you bring, bring examples of the school book I just showed you, or the curriculum, you take the curriculum off of our website, put it in front of them and say, we'd like you to think about this. And that's what I did with Congressman Al Green from Houston. And he was shocked, he was shocked these people. I said, I'm not trying to convince, you have to say people, we're not trying to convince you to vote against your conscience, vote against the Arab, the Arab cause that you may now believe in. We're not, we're not, what we're asking you is to be reasonable. You're gonna give money? Okay, but what are the conditions? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I understand your frustration, Ari, because it does seem like um, you know when you do take the approach that Mr. Bedin is telling us, you know, it's to reach their conscience and their and and their humanity, and that's that's just a bipartisan issue. And so, you know, people like David Bedeen's uh, center will watch that and, and track that and make sure that um, those conditions are met. So that's important. We have another question about the um, Swedish politician. Can you tell us who that Swedish, po Swedish politician is? To follow my I'm a social worker by profession. I keep confidence when I'm asked to do so. Okay. But and that's and they've asked me to keep it you know a little bit confidential. But I'm giving you my I've been in the Swedish Parliament three times, and um, we're having some some success with people who have been worked over and basically been uh, manipulated. Okay. So it, it it works. Okay. We have some friends on this call that are currently living in Sweden, so they were curious. Well, they should be in touch with me. I will put them in touch with our Swedish contingent. We have a wonderful Swedish group we're working with. Who, are, who work day and night, they've actually, we, our films have come out in Swedish, but they've also come out, by the way, in German. And our biggest effort right now is on Germany. Germany, after the United States pulled out, became the number one funder of UNRWA. And uh, there are 6 million reasons why Germany shouldn't be doing things like that, right? That's right, that's right. Okay, fantastic, thank you. So be in touch with Mr. Bedeen, um, Judy, if you want to get more information. All right, anybody else have any other questions or comments before we wrap up today? We'll we're flash on the screen how people can be of help to us, please. Yes, please tell me um, again how, uh, that's the donation. Let me pop that up real quick. We have, a, we have a, uh, a, an agency in California that uh, takes care of our donations. If that's the link, please do be of help to us. And if you want, if you want us to make a presentation, a special presentation anywhere for a church, for an organization, for a, for, a, for a school, for anyone, we're happy to do so. That's why we're here. And you know, thanks to the Corona world, we're not traveling too much. So it's not, not a real great, not a, a hard thing anymore to, to travel somewhere while I'm just sitting here. I, I might be in my pajamas now, for all you know. Right, right, right. So this is the good thing about Zoom. We have been able to connect. Great, fantastic. Okay, last call for questions. Let's see, uh, I don't see anything in the chat box. Somebody has a very important question. What's the opinion amongst Israeli Jews about the ceasefire? First of all, there is no ceasefire. Yes, it didn't right. happen. Right. That is the great lie. That's right. No ceasefire. Uh, I published in Israel Insight magazine last week. It's a hudna. Hudna is the Arabic term for uh, temporary respite, uh, and which, according to the Islamic tradition, which you can open, you can stop at any point, any time, for any reason. 
So it's it's a misnomer. Look on my site. We'll guide. This my site will guide you, so you can write a letter to the editor anytime someone refers to the current situation as a ceasefire. Everyone in Israel, I don't know anyone who's not skeptical about the current situation. Why? Because they attacked Tel Aviv last week. How many people remember that? That was last week. Tel Aviv, the center of Tel Aviv. 150 and 50 rockets in one night. That was really something. And God's hand is with us that we didn't, didn't see more casualties. Right. But it's really something to see. It is and, incredible. And, and I wanted to say that from a religious point of view, when we're surrounded by everyone and we, we, we come out, we, we yes, 10 people were murdered by the actually 12 people, including the foreign workers. 12 people were murdered, not 12,000. Not 1,200, but 12. We don't say only, but we do. We do bless God's uh, protection of us when this, when, when, when you see the numbers game. Right, right. Mr. Bedin, thank you for your time. It is our honor to um, have you here on this uh, episode of Just Among Friends. Uh, we are grateful for the information and for the direction and the guidance. Um, Anyone who wants to ask any question in the future. Israelbehindthenews.com. You'll see all my contact information. You'll see my shoe size. You'll see everything you need, how to be in touch, because we have to keep going. We have one country for the Jews. We have one country to protect. God wants us here, and we want to work with the people who blesses God's chosen people. Thank, Thank you. Very good. Uh, friends, for those of you who are on this call or who are watching the recording, please be sure to join us next week, May 30th, for Yoram Edinger for another outstanding, outstanding speaker um, that we will be having here. So please join us. Also, um, this video will be up on our YouTube channel, um, hopefully by the end of the day, if not sooner. So please share this with everybody so we can get the truth out and get people to contact um, our congressman to take action. It's not enough to hear this presentation. We must take action. Thank you, friends. God bless you and have a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.